What's up guys, my name's Lachlan and I'm here today with an Xbox One vs PlayStation 4 comparison video. So this is going to be broken down into 8 or so sections and I'm just going to talk quickly about each topic and point out some of the main benefactors and some of the important stuff that I find is, you know, relevant to the topic. Now, just before we get underway, I'd like to say a few things just to avoid any kind of like World War 3 comments section. Firstly, I believe a lot of the next-gen consoles is down to basically personal preference, so what you kind of prefer, what you kind of want to get out of the experience. So we're going to have a lot of varying opinions, you're probably going to disagree with me a lot, and if you do disagree with me on a certain topic, just change the answer, because then you can sort of rack up your own kind of tally towards the end of the video. Secondly, bear in mind that this video is being made today, so the 31st of August, and a lot can change from now, you know, even in the last couple of days leading up to console release, or even literally five minutes after this video is made. So, you know, bear those things in mind as you're watching this, and obviously that could be a decider or a tipping point of this kind of, like, console war that's going on. And finally, just to point out, I may get the odd thing wrong, so I've been trying to keep this factual, but I might get something completely inaccurate or completely incorrect. If so, just point it out in the comments section below, and obviously write your opinions in the comments section below. I feel as though they're just as relevant as mine are, and I'd actually like to read some of them as well. Okay, so let's have a look at the specs of the hardware, the guts. You know, a lot of people have decided the specs are quite an important turning point of the console war, and the PlayStation 4 admittedly is slightly powerful than the Xbox One. Now let's jump into this immediately and have a look at the, both of the new console specs. Now the specs are quite a turning point for some people, a lot of people feel as though they're really important, so do I. So let's go through each of them one by one. Now both consoles have opted to use a Blu-ray slash DVD optical drive, so they break even on that point. The reason they're both using Blu-ray is because Blu-ray has a much higher disc capacity, so therefore we won't have to use two discs ever again. So, for example, if you play Battlefield 3 on Xbox 360 like me, you'll know that we have to use two discs to switch between single player and multiplayer, so that's a real pain in the ass. Now the CPU for both the Xbox One and the PS4 are both 8 core CPUs and they're both manufactured by AMD. Now the reason the PlayStation 4 wins in this category is because it has a faster clock speed than the Xbox One. And although I haven't written it down, the PlayStation 4 clock speed is 1.7 GHz, whereas the Xbox One is 1.3 GHz. Now this is only a slight jump faster, however in the long run it'll probably be really important. Moving along to the RAM now, we see a significant leap in the console war of things, especially when it comes to specs. Now, although both of the consoles have opted to use 8GB of RAM, the change comes when we talk about the types of RAM they're using. Now, the PlayStation 4 is using GDDR5 RAM, whereas the Xbox is using DDR3 RAM. Now, GDDR5 RAM is unified memory, which means it's significantly faster than DDR3 RAM, which is why the PlayStation wins in this category. Overall, this is probably going to mean better processing and better graphics, although some developers have shunned this idea. Other developers believe it's going to be up to around 50% stronger graphics however we can't really confirm this. The Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 are both using AMD Radeon GPUs and the change comes again when we start talking about the specifications of this. Now the Xbox One is using 853 MHz with 768 shaders whereas the PlayStation 4 is believed to be around 1.2 GHz with 1152 shaders. Now what this means again is that the PlayStation 4 is slightly faster or slightly better than the Xbox One in terms of hardware. Now when we talk about peak GPU shading, the Xbox One comes in at 1.31 teraflops, whereas the PlayStation 4 comes in at 1.84 teraflops. So slightly faster again. Another difference comes when we talk about the power supply unit. Now the PlayStation 4 has an internal power supply unit, so what this means is that we're not going to have a power brick on the PlayStation 4, which seems strange considering it's so small. But the Xbox One does have a power supply unit, it's external, it's another power brick, it's a little bit smaller than the Xbox 360's power brick, but it's really confusing considering its size. So yet again, PlayStation 4 is a leap ahead of the Xbox One in terms of hardware. Now the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 break even when it comes to storage. Now a lot of people may argue this with me, but I feel as though this is right. So, you can't actually remove the hard drive on the Xbox One. Although it's 500 gigabytes and you probably won't end up doing it, you actually cannot remove the hard drive. On PlayStation 4, you can. Now, the reason I've decided that this category breaks even is because on the Xbox One, it's been confirmed that you can add external storage. So I can make my 500 gigabytes 1.5 terabytes. Whereas on the PlayStation 4, although we can remove the hard drive, we haven't actually been told if we can add to it yet. So that's why I believe they break even. Although we actually cannot remove the hard drive from the Xbox One, we can add to it. And although we can remove the hard drive on the PlayStation 4, it hasn't been confirmed yet if we can add to it. Now the cloud storage on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 is a debatable thing. Now, 
I'd say they break even here, although I do believe potentially the Xbox One could win this category due to the size of it. Now, the Xbox One is most likely to give you more amounts of cloud storage than the PlayStation 4 due to their superior sort of 300,000 servers and the fact that just in general cloud like the cloud in general is supposed to be just more significant on the xbox one but for this time i'll say they break even hopefully we hear some news about how much cloud storage we're going to be receiving now let's move along to the final points of the video now the usbs on the xbox one and playstation 4 break even they're both using usb 3.0 which is a high speed version of usb 2.0 and they both have three ports now web connection, I believe the Xbox One slightly heads the PlayStation 4 in terms of web connection. They're both using gigabit ethernet, so if you're really rich, you live somewhere in America where Google Fiber is about, you're really lucky because you're gonna achieve the highest speeds. Now the reason I believe the Xbox One slightly heads the PS4 on this bit is down to its dual band Wi-Fi technology. So dual band Wi-Fi technology allows us to get rid of interference and achieve the best kind of Wi-Fi signal so we can get the best quality out of it. So an example with this would be that all of our phones and you know all of our consoles and our you know our PC and everything they all run on 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi band so by switching to 5 gigahertz you ignore a lot of the interference and you get the best signal about so that's why I believe the Xbox One's a little bit ahead there now when we start talking about connection the Xbox One doesn't have Bluetooth, but the PlayStation does, but the Xbox has Wi-Fi Direct and the PlayStation doesn't. Now, they basically just break even in both of these parts because these are both equally good terms of connecting maybe controllers and headsets to your console. So, Wi-Fi Direct is a way of connecting the controller to the um, console and Bluetooth is also a way of doing that. Now, it's believed that Wi-Fi Direct is slightly faster and a bit more responsive than Bluetooth, but you probably won't notice it. In fact, we don't really notice any lag time on any of our consoles now as it is. So that, yet again, equal terms of connecting to your console. And finally, we have to talk about Game DVR. Now, Game DVR is basically just recording and sharing your content, of which both the Xbox One and PlayStation has. So they break even in this category. Apparently, the Xbox One has slightly less recording time than the PlayStation 4. However, in all honesty, I don't see many people using this feature. Therefore, they break just about even in this category. So that's it for the first part of this Xbox One vs PlayStation 4 video. Now in this category of hardware, the PlayStation 4 wins. Now in some cases it's quite significant, in some cases it's only by a little bit. And in some cases they just break even, but overall the PlayStation 4 is a little bit of a leap ahead in comparison to the Xbox One. Now guys, like, comment, subscribe as usual, I like to hear your opinions, and we will move on to part 2 where I'll be talking about the user interface of the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Thank <laughs> you.